Hello, students. Michael Sanchez, violin teacher here. Welcome to today's Irish fiddle class. We're going to be working on The Wind That Shakes the Barley today, which is an Irish reel. Uh, basically, the tune itself is not hard at all. We're going to be adding in some improv to it. I'm um, also going to be putting in some, some double stops in some spots, so it might be something that's uh, a little bit more challenging for some. Uh, but, yeah, the beginning part, we're definitely going to be really working on understanding the chord structure and changing up some of the notes. So, yeah, I'll play through it once. Uh, it's kind of a fast tune. So, yeah, basic um, bluegrass bowing is good as far as slurring the first two notes of the four in most cases. Let me get my pen here. So, yeah, slurring these is pretty good. But, yeah, I really like this piece because it kind of has some simple chord structures for some of you guys that are maybe a little bit newer to um, improv. So it starts off with a D chord, goes into a G chord, which is a really good um, chord structure to start with when you're first starting improv. So a D chord is D, F sharp, A. Those are the notes of, of the arpeggio of the chord. And then a G chord is G, B, D. Okay, so as you can see, the first note of the piece does follow the rule of the A being a part of the chord, and the G also follows the rule as that's a B. So you can see right there that they're following that structure. But now easily this note can be changed to any of the notes of the G arpeggio. So this this note could easily be a D, could easily be a, a B, or it could be a G. So, um, so what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to play one of these notes and change it up a bit. Um, that's going to be kind of our target. So what I've done with you guys in the past, for some of you guys that followed some of my improv, we have like a set target. And then we try to kind of change what notes are in between. But in this case, I think what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to vary the target. So it's kind of, think of it kind of like a moving target. We have one of three possibilities. And really, it's even more than that because there's multiple Ds on the instrument, multiple Bs, and so on. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with the same note. And we can even somewhat keep this. But let's see how we do... Actually, no, towards the end, I want to change definitely those notes. And then I want to change, um, use one of the notes of the G chord. So I want to start off like this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make it the last three notes. So these notes, let's just let's do this. So we're not going to play those notes. Okay. And then, so this is all a question mark. And then the note that we're aiming towards is going to be a D, a B, or a G. So, all right, let's aim towards a D. That worked. Let's try something else. Let's aim towards a B. All right, let's try another one. Let's aim towards a G on the E string. Okay, uh, let's do another one. But let's th this time let's do it again, but we'll keep going. Um, so I'll try to come up with a melody and then hit this A. Okay, let's see what happens. So we're going towards a D on the A string. That was improving the first um, little bit there. So I mean, it, 
the, the notes that are in the actual written part. But we can change it to something like this. Like that. So that was all based on the rules I just set, which were changing up the last three notes to the first measure, changing this note to a different note of the chord, and then aiming towards the A. Raise your hand if that makes sense. Okay, let me do another one. Let's aim towards B. Ah, so see what's going to happen is what just happened to me. Um, you're going to have times when you do it and it just doesn't sound good at all. So don't do what I just did. Keep going. But I just wanted to give you an example of that you're going to have that as well. Um, other times you're going to do it and it's going to sound really good and you're going to be really happy with it. Um, normally what I would have done there is continue on and kind of try to um, try to find myself a little bit and try to make it go towards that A a little bit nicer. Um, but I'm just giving you guys talking out loud on what's going to happen sometimes. All right, I'm going to go towards E2 on the E string G. That worked pretty well. I like that one. That one I just changed to a D there at the end there. Good. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let me do it again. I'm going to change up some of the rhythms a little bit just to give you guys some some ideas on variants of rhythm because that's also a big part of improv. some faster rhythms, so I, I go the opposite way. Or. Ah, I didn't like that one. Yeah, I didn't like that one as much. better yeah so uh hopefully you guys can kind of see what i'm doing there uh so you know when you're practicing like i'm doing you know having some different rules put in place you know on different chord changes are kind of the way to go um and then just trying to be imaginative in between so uh let's let's maybe change it up a little bit let's do instead of landing on an a let's land on something other than that uh, different note of the chord. Let's land on, how about an F sharp on the E string, so an E1. So ultimately my landing zone, my landing note is an E1 now. It's going to kind of change my tone of how I work into that. Okay. Probably would make more sense if I continue going. So let's let's land on a G. So we're gonna take this. We're gonna take the second ending. So I'm gonna continue on through here. I'm gonna hit an E1, and then I'm gonna hit a E2 here. Let's see what happens. All right. So here's the bass. This is. <laughs> let's go back to the bass melody so you guys remember what it's supposed to, like what the bass melody sounds like. So improv. Ah, 
forgot about the E1. Can I do it again? Loved it. That was my best one. So see, sometimes that's also going to happen. You're going to do it and just love the, the solo. And um, then you start to practice it more. And you start to just kind of remember what you did a little bit. You could even potentially record yourself and uh, kind of mental know what you liked the best. That's kind of how, how things work when you start to play like in a band or you do a lot of live sessions or whatever. Um, you tend to have more successes and failures, but it kind of it also does take practice. You, know, you just have to kind of work, work and try different things. All right, let me do a couple more. Is I played and accidentally I played on E3. I played an A um, here, which technically would have worked fine because A is a part of the chord. But don't like freak out, you know, if you're practicing it and all of a sudden you played, you know, especially if it's a note of the chord. <laughs> um, I should actually give you an example of maybe a spot where I actually accidentally play a really bad note, which wouldn't work, but I can try to kind of continue on and, and not stop. So let me accidentally play something really bad here on this chord. It's not going to sound as bad because I'm not playing with a guitar, but it would if I play with a guitar. Okay, I'm going to play um, I'm going to play a G there, which would totally clash there. So. Instead of like freaking out, I just try to find myself. I kind of found it there a little bit. Right there, I play next to them. So you, you kind of just, um, here you go off track and you kind of come back. You find your way back. Um, but it's all about that imagination. It's like, you know you're off, but you just, you're just a little bit off. You just have to get back on the, on the trail. You're not, you're not off the cliff. <laughs> you just, you're just kind of leaning towards the edge of the cliff. Hope that makes sense. Raise your hand if you guys are following me there. <laughs> All right. Okay, um, let's go on to the next section, um, and I want to talk about double stops so you can actually put in here. So the last measure before the second part. So instead of going... Try to do a first finger with a three on the A string. So it'd be. You can actually leave the three down on the A string and then try to play the second finger on the E string. So basically, what you can do here is you can play third finger on the A string all the way through there. So, and you can actually even slide into the three there. That would be kind of cool. Slide into the three. Not, don't slide the two, slide the three. So, slide the three. Sorry. That. So 
That's what I'm trying to do, sorry. So that's... So yeah, it's just about keeping your fingers on the tips, not letting the three hit the E string. So lean the three kind of more towards the D string. Like that. Obviously, if the three hits the E string, it's going to make a really nasty sound. So we don't want that. So yeah, maybe experiment a little bit with the double stops. Um, try that. And um, if you can't do that, then maybe just try sliding some different notes. So like, slide. Even slide the four. Like that. All right, yeah, let me just kind of put some of these in here so you guys know what to maybe do. Um, anytime you have a one, I do a down slide. That's kind of what I did there. But, yeah, anytime I had a quarter note, I typically did an up slide. Up slide. Down slide. Even an up and a down slide you could do like, like I think I did when I just played it. Down slide, maybe a drone at the end. Like that. Okay. Um, any questions on that? Uh, looks like you guys are just enjoying the class. Good to hear. If you guys have any questions, feel free to post it. Um, for those of you guys that are interested in these classes, I hold these at uh, 9.30 uh, p.m. Eastern time on Monday nights. So hopefully you guys that are watching on audio will join us next week. Um, also, uh, for those of you guys that are here, as well as those listening on audio, I have a new um, email class I'm starting to put together. Um, so I'm basically sending out videos uh, every other day to students that sign up for my newsletter. So if, if you're interested, you just visit my site, violintutorpro.com, and um, you can actually sign up here as I uh, put together your uh, screenshot here. So it's violintutorpro.com. There should be a form on the home page or whatever other page. And you can specify what level lessons you would like. So there's actually five different categories. And for the first time ever since I've started, I've, I've been doing Violin Tutor Pro for about six years now. Um, I've never actually done uh, classes, you know, via email um, for different ability levels. So that's kind of new. So I encourage you guys to sign up for that. And that's totally free. So great. Hope to see you some of you guys next week. I'm going to go ahead and just hang out with the people here in the live class, answer any further questions. Have a great day.